I got a pretty interesting request in the comments down below and somebody asked, how do you do this kind of technique? What are we doing here? We're animating the shadows. So it's a UI element that doesn't have a shadow, but when you tap on it, the shadow raises up, animates, and it looks like a button that suddenly just animates out of nowhere. And then when you let go, it animates back down. So that's what we're doing today. Hey everybody, welcome back, this is Alex. And we're doing a bunch of shadow related techniques. Uh, in the last few videos I've already shared with you, we did one on shadows in iOS, I did one on Android and how to do two different techniques for applying shadows in Android. There was a video on how to match up shadows on iOS and Android so they look similar and the settings you need to apply and how those settings work together. So if you haven't seen those videos, go back in the channel and check those out. I'll link to it down below as well. And somebody else requested that I do a video on how to do a directive in Vue, in NativeScript Vue, how to create a directive that you can just apply an attribute to a UI element and it'll automatically just apply a shadow to that. And we're gonna do that also. So if you're not subscribed yet to this channel, consider subscribing and hit the little notification bell so you don't miss those videos. Today we're animating shadows and we're building on a couple of other techniques that I've already showed you. Specifically, we're gonna be using the shadow technique that I showed you how to create shadows in iOS and the shadow technique that I showed you on Android. Because we're doing the animation in both iOS and Android, you're gonna to wanna to know how to do shadow application in iOS and Android. And we're also gonna be using the technique I showed you on how to animate using JavaScript. So it's a video that I created that's really popular. If you haven't seen that, check that out in this channel. I'll link to it down below as well. It's how to animate anything in JavaScript in NativeScript. That's a lot of script words. We're also using TypeScript. So JavaScript, TypeScript, NativeScript. We're doing animations and we're animating any property that you want. We're gonna use that technique here today as well. I'm not gonna go over it in detail here because I already went over it and we built it up from scratch in that other video and I explained everything. Here we're just gonna be using that library that I wrote as an extra module and you'll see how we can apply it to pretty much anything. In this case, we're applying it to shadows. Let's do that now. The first thing I want you to know is that we did this already in the previous video where I show you how to match up the iOS shadow with Android shadow, kind of to get it to match approximately. If you haven't seen that video, go check that out. I show you the iOS properties you need to set and the Android property you need to set to kind of uh, get those things to match as well as the CSS that we're gonna need, which is this right here and the markup. We're using a content view to wrap a label to get that effect. Now the content view, it's essentially this button here that you're gonna see. This is where we're gonna tap. We're gonna tap on this area here, but the tap event is gonna end up on the content view. Right now, when we're loading the content view, we're calling this function called on shadow loaded in the code behind. So let's close up the CSS. We're not gonna need that. I'm just gonna leave main page XML and main page.ts. All right, so you've already seen the code. And if you wanna see me build this up, go watch that video. This is where we're setting the iOS properties. So I'm gonna set that shadow radius to zero to begin with and I'm gonna set the Android elevation to zero as well. Android elevation is zero by default, so you don't really need this line at all, but I'll keep it there just for completion because we do need the iOS lines to be here unloaded because we don't wanna set all these properties when we're actually doing our tap. We only wanna worry about the shadow radius. This is what it looks like now. We just have a label, and when we tap on it, we want that animation to happen. So what event are we gonna use? Well. We can use the tap event, but the tap event is actually going to trigger only when I release my finger from the screen or release the mouse in my case, because I'm using the simulators. What I want to use is the touch event here. The touch event will trigger the animation as soon as I put my finger down. So that's what I want to use instead. But the touch event has to be handled a little bit differently. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to call the on touch handler for the touch event. So let's go to the code behind and define that. I'm gonna export a function called onTouch, and this is gonna get some args. Now, you can't just use event data here because it doesn't have enough information on it. So args dot has only event name and the object. We have a better type that we can use that's gonna give us a little bit more specifics. And I've already done some imports here. This is coming from TNS core modules, UI gestures. And what we need is the touch gesture event data. 
So instead of this regular event data down here, I'm going to use the touch gesture event data. And now our args dot has all these other options that we can use. We can get X, get Y, we can get the action. That's what we're looking for. So we want to only run the following logic, the animation logic, when the action is down. If I hover my mouse over that, you can see that the action types are up, move, down, or cancel. In fact, there is another type that we've imported called touch action, and that's the types that we can use to do the comparison so we don't have to hard code strings here. So I can say if args.action is not equal to, and then touch action dot down. So anything else other than down, we could just return. Otherwise, we'll run the following logic. So we want to grab that view, and this is going to be args.object, and we're going to cast it as view. Now to animate, I'm going to use the animation helper library that I wrote. By the way, this is another one of those videos that I'm going to refer you to because I go through all the details of how we generate this function and how we create these helpers. So I already imported this animation helpers.ts file here. Here it is. I'll show it to you. I'll scroll down so you can see it in case you don't want to watch that video. I'll slowly scroll this down. So there's the code for it. But if you want to know what it does and how we build it and why, go watch that video. I'll link to it down below. It's called Animate Anything in JavaScript and it's right here on this channel. So we're going to use the animate function here and we're going to pass it the JS animation definition. All right. So first we need to build up the JS animation definition. That's def of type JS animation definition. And this has a few things on it. Curve, get range and step. Curve is like a timing function, but we're just going to go simple here. We're going to go linear and to define curve in a linear way it's just going to take the current value and return the same value. That's going to give us a linear curve. Very simple. The next thing we need to define is the range from what value do we want to animate to what value do we want to animate. So this is going to be a function that's going to return to us an object. So return an object and the object is going to have from and to. So let's say from zero to eight. So whatever we're going to animate, it's going to animate from zero to eight. These are numeric values. And finally, we have one more and that's step. So for each step, what are we animating? We're going to get a value back and then we need to animate something. In our case, let's say we wanted to animate the Android elevation. I would say view.android.set elevation and we're going to pass in that value. Finally, we're going to call our animate function here and we're going to give it a duration. Let's say I want to slow it down quite a bit. 1000 milliseconds will be well, like one second and then an array of animation definitions. So I'm going to create an array here and pass in our one definition. So right now, if I run this on iOS, it's going to crash because we're setting Android property here. So we need to make those specific iOS and Android things. So let's say if is iOS, then we're going to run something else. We're going to run this Android code. Let's check this out. I'm going to save this and let's go to our Android emulator and I'm going to press on high and you can see that we already have a little bit of an animated shadow there, which is pretty cool. Let's say I set the two value to 80, something really high and let's try that out. I'm going to tap and it's going to animate to 80. Wow, very cool. So we're almost there. We just need to make this a little bit easier to understand and we also need to return that animation back to its original shape which is no shadow. So we want to animate it up and we want to animate it down. So let's uh, let's extract some of these variables here that we're using. I want to have a duration here for our animation and that's going to be, let's leave it at 1000 for now, but we're going to need to set to shrink that later on because 1000 is really slow for this kind of micro interaction. So we'll use that in a little bit. Then we want to extract the curve function. So const curve and we'll set that T to T that's going to be a function. So now we can replace it in here instead of T to T. We can just say curve and then we don't want all this logic in here. By the way, if you saw my previous video on comparing iOS and Android shadows, you'll know that this value 80 is not going to work for both of them. So we're going to need to have a range for iOS and a range for Android. Let's do that. So const get range iOS and we'll call this up because this is uh, when the shadow is coming up. We're also going to need a down that's on the way down. So let's create the function here and we're going to, I'm just going to copy this right here, return that. So for iOS, we're going to go from zero to say, I don't know, let's do eight to make it more noticeable. 
We're also going to need a down. So I'm going to copy this and paste it here. Get range iOS down. And we're going to go back from eight down to zero. That takes care of the range for iOS. Now we need the range for Android. So I'm going to copy both of these and call this one get range Android up and get range Android down. For Android, we're going to do a much larger swing. We're going to go from zero to 80 because we're doing the elevation instead of the radius. And for Android down, we're going to go from 80 to zero. Now in our JS animation definition, when we call get range, we can actually replace that. And we can say if is iOS, then we're going to pass get range iOS up. Otherwise, we're going to say get range Android up. That's it. All right. So that leaves only the step function. Let's take care of the step function. The step function is going to be the same whether we're going up or down, but we are going to differentiate based on the platform. So step iOS is going to be a function that takes a value. Let's go ahead and just copy this code right here. Oh, not this code. We're going to copy this code right here. So we're going to call iOS UI view layer, and then we're going to change the shadow radius. So I'm going to copy that and paste it right there. But what is iOS UI view? That's going to be the view.iOS property. So that's the native script view right here, dot iOS. So that's the step iOS function. But instead of setting the shadow radius to zero, we're going to set this shadow radius to V. That's the value that's coming into the step function. And let's create the step Android function. Same thing, we're going to take a value. And here we're going to have a Android view which is going to be view.android and then android view dot set elevation. I can just copy this right here. There we go. And now for our step function, we can just delete all this and say is iOS. Then we're going to do step iOS. Otherwise, we're going to do step Android. That cleans up our JS animation definition. And the reason we want to do it that way is because after we animate, we want to animate back. So this function returns a promise to us. We're going to say then and we're going to execute a function after the first animation ends. We're going to create another definition. So let's call this one def up and pass in def up. And I'm going to copy def up here and paste it inside. We're going to call this one def down. Now def down is going to be pretty much the same, but get range is going to change. So if it's iOS, we're going to say get range iOS down. And if it's not iOS, we're going to say get range Android down. And finally, we're going to call our animate function one more time. 1000 then pass in the array having def down in it and then let's take care of this duration right here right now we're set to duration 1000 that's the total duration of the entire animation so here we're going to say duration divided by two for the first half and then duration divided by two for the second half so there is our animation function let's try this out let's do it on android first and there it is it animates to 80 and then back to zero pretty cool Let's try this on iOS. That's going to animate to um, eight. So that's the shadow radius property that we're animating on iOS. And on Android, we're animating the elevation property. Now you can also animate the offset on iOS as well. If you really wanted to, you can add that to the animation definitions and run them at the same time. Now, of course, that's a very slow animation and I hope you can see that. It's taken a second to do that. If we go ahead and make the duration a little bit more realistic, like 300, then each part of the animation is gonna take only 150 milliseconds. So it's gonna be really fast. I don't know if it's gonna show up on this video, but I think that that actually is a little bit more appropriate for a micro interaction length. Now on iOS, it looks okay, but on Android, that elevation is really, really large. So we might wanna change it to something like 50 here. Let's give that a shot. And there it is. It's a little bit better. We can probably play around with that a little bit more. Now, those of you that want to just stay in the JavaScript world, you can go ahead and get away with something like this. However, those with a keen eye might have seen that we are just using native APIs here, native API calls to create those shadows in iOS and Android. So if you're using native API calls, you can also use native API calls to do the animation part itself, not JavaScript animations, but the native animations. And you can and of course, you can go ahead and research that and do that yourself. If you wanted to do that, it is possible in NativeScript. And in fact, it's going to be more performant 
to use native animation APIs to do those animations than the JavaScript animations that I showed you. But this will get the job done if you want those animations and you want them quickly and you want a reusable JavaScript animation helper library, which is what I gave you here. A couple weeks ago, I released this video called Custom Toggle Bar. You can actually apply shadows in this technique as well. You can combine them together and add a shadow to the custom toggle bar. If you haven't seen that video, it's pretty cool also. It's a nice tutorial on how to create your own toggle bar that's gonna replace the segmented bar in NativeScript because the segmented bar looks so different on iOS and Android. And this custom toggle bar will allow you to style it however you want. And here's some comments you guys left me in that video. Freaking love it. This one is going on my projects. Thanks. That's awesome, Kareem. I'm glad to hear that. Luis Fernando says it will be a great video to implement PayPal or Stripe payments. Yeah, I agree with that. That's that would make a good video as well. Donnie Pro says video Yang Sangat Bermafad Don Keren. Uh, I had to use Google Translate for this one because I don't really know what that means. And I used Google Translate, it says, very useful and cool video. I use NativeScript because of you, Alex, I'm waiting for the next video. And I really appreciate that comment, even though I didn't understand it, I use Google Translate. So thanks for that. And Yuvoria, who is a frequent commenter here, says, please make tutorial how to make tab view with first or last tab view item is absolute sticky. I made this concept on CNN Indonesia apps design, thanks. Well, I tried downloading the CNN app, but I only have the CNN US app. I don't know if there's any difference between them, but I, I didn't really understand uh, what you mean by that. So I would appreciate if you post some kind of video and link me to it, or just an animated GIF of an example or some other example that you can link me to so that I can see it and then be able to create a tutorial on that. All right, folks, thanks a lot. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. And if you're not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe. You'll get more tips, tricks, and tutorials in NativeScript. You can reach me on Twitter, I'm at Digitalix over there, and I will see you next time. Happy native scripting.